So painting the tyres can be a little tricky uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, we've already painted the hubs, so we're going to try and paint just up to the line and keep it as neat as we can. Don't worry if it's not as neat as you'd like, it comes with practice. Now, um, a bit of blue tack will help. Uh, immeasurably and I'll show you what you can do with the blue tack in a moment. If you've not got blue tack then if you paint this part of the tyre first and then put it down and let it dry and then when it's dry paint the other half of the tyre and then when that's dry you'll have to flip the tyre over and do it again so you'll have to paint the tyre four times per coat. If you've got a bit of blue tack you can just put it on your blue tack like that so that you're painting um, as much as you can get to and then you let it dry and flip over so you're only doing two then or if you've got a cocktail tip stick and a small amount of blue tack like that um, you can put the cocktail stick into the blue tack roll it on so it's not much thicker than the cocktail stick and then push that into the side of your wheel that's got the hole and then as long as you're gentle with the brush it, you won't knock it off uh, and you can actually paint the whole thing in one go so that is what I am going to do so when we paint the tyres we just have to be very very careful not too much paint on the brush and just make sure that we are taking our time it is going to need two coats the trickiest part is getting around the uh, middle of the wheel the paint painting around the hub and the way to do it is slowly and have your brush just a little bit away from the edge and then as you press down the paint will just sort of meet up to the edge and it takes a lot of practice you're certainly not going to get it right first time the more you do it the better you'll get Time to paint the propeller, which is black, um, and again, it's going to need two coats. And the way to paint this is to just start at the bottom and go up to the point of the blade. And you don't need to worry about painting the centre bit because it's going to be covered by the spinner and won't be seen. We'll do the other one now with the spinner um, it is definitely much harder to paint so blue tack will really help if you can if you've got blue tack you can put the spinner on top and paint it um, if you've not got blue tack then you're just going to have to paint as much as you can and then let it dry um, and then come back and do the rest of it Okay, so just going to put glue in the tail wheel. We're putting some glue inside the socket that the wheel sits in. Make sure you get it facing the right way. So it is possible to put it in the wrong way around. So that is the tail wheel in. And it's important that you put the tail wheel on before you put these wheels on because we're going to 
need to align the wheels a little bit while the glue is wet. Uh, and that is actually our next job. So I'm going to take our two wheels and if you look closely at them you'll see there's a little flat spot on the wheel which is just there. Um, and that is the bit that touches the ground. So you need that to be facing upwards as we put the wheel on uh, with the plane upside down and then once we've put them on we'll turn the plane the right way around so, and make sure that the, the flat is totally flat and doesn't look odd. So what we're going to do is put some glue on both of these So, and then put the wheel on with the flat up. And while the glue is still wet, we put the aeroplane on its wheels and make sure that the flat are flat on the surface. And once you check the flat on the surface, you can turn the plane back upside down and allow them to dry. We can now glue the wheel covers on even if um, you've only done one coat of paint like I have, because it's easy enough to paint them once they're in place because we've already painted the insides. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on each one of these pegs. That's the only place we're going to put the glue. And then carefully make sure we've got it the right way around, facing the right way. Check the instructions for which way it faces. And then those pegs just pop into the two little holes on the side there. like so so we're now on step 12 and we are finishing the cockpit and the canopy now here the instructions have a mistake um, it shows this part here A14 being glued just behind those two lines um, but that's too close and actually the part glues into this little rectangular slot here um, it's too close if you glue it there and it doesn't fit so it's this part that we're talking about and rather than trying to glue it there like the instructions suggest with it going over the pilot's head we want to put that little raised lump underneath inside that groove and then it's exactly the right length. Now we can paint that once it once it's all glued in but we can't paint the front face of this because it's too close to the pilot so we do need to paint um, this side before we glue it in. So. Um, again, a little bit of blue tack is helpful if you've got it. And we're painting get the cockpit colour. Now when that dries, if you want, the little raised lump there is a cushion for the pilot's head. And you can just paint that in uh, black and that would look like a little bit more detail that you've added. So we need to wait for that to dry before we can glue it in. It's a good idea to paint at the underside of this part as well before you glue it in, just because it's easier to do it now. Um, you can do it once it's glued in, it'll just be a little bit more difficult. Right then, the paint is dry on this, so we can get this glued into place now, um, along with this 
part that goes at the back of it. So I'm actually going to glue this piece in first because it'll help locate the other one. And we're just going to put a bit of glue on the bottom edge only of that one. Make sure it's nice and straight. Have the part in. We can let the glue dry on that and then um, we can paint it in. But while we've got the glue out, we can paint the front part of the canopy. So, first thing to do is to test fit it and make sure you've got it the right way around. If it's the wrong way around, it will look odd, it will look very tall. Now, you have to be very, very careful when you glue this. Um, because the glue that we're using will make the clear part go foggy and you won't be able to see through it anymore. So just a very tiny amount on the edge. Smallest amount you can possibly get away from. Don't worry if you get a little bit too much on. It's all part of learning. So that's the first bit of our glass on. Now the glue should be dry enough now for us to just paint in these parts here. You need to make sure that you're happy with the painting of them before you put the other glass part on because once you put that on you're not going to be able to get in and touch them up and things like that. You can see why we painted the underside of that part now. Just a lot easier to get in than it is now that the part's glued in place. And then finally we can glue the rest of the canopy on and you've got two options here. You can have it closed or you can have it open. So once again, as little glue as you can get away with but it doesn't need that much to stick it in place really and if you're doing it open like I am you only need a little bit of glue at the front you don't need it all the way along That is now seriously looking like an aeroplane. Now the next part that we're going to put on goes underneath the aeroplane and carries the bomb. Um, and it's this part here. Um, and then it has this cradle that goes on it like so. Um, and it has two little location pins and we should have drilled holes underneath. And I missed it so we haven't done it. So we're going to do like we did on the top of the wings and just cut them off um, and then sand them flat so that the part sits properly on the uh, underside of the aeroplane. Okay. So just want to check fit where they're going where it's going to go so we know. Um, and it goes there 
like that. So now we know where it goes, we can glue that on. And now that's glued on, we can glue the cradle on. But we mustn't glue the bomb on at this stage because the um, bomb needs painting and it'll be easier to do that um, before we glue it on. So we'll let the glue dry and then we can think about painting that. Now's the time to catch up with all those little painting jobs while we're painting this. The second coat of here needs to be done. And just check around the air, aeroplane, see if there's anything that needs touching up that you might have missed while you've got the paint out. It's always a good idea. Or you might have scratched off while handling the, the aeroplane. That can happen as well. So always worth a good bit of a look around when you've got the paint open. So you need to build the bomb up, it's two halves, once the paint has dried on your bomb cradle. Um, I've already done mine and painted mine, so I can show you that here. So once you're happy that you've got it painted, you've done two coats and it's all looking okay, then we're ready to glue it on. So there's four little mounting points that it attaches to and we'll put glue on each one. And that should be enough. And it's a good idea to leave your plane upside down while the glue dries, just to stop the risk of it dropping off. So that leaves us now with this assembly of the propeller um, and the engine at the front here. Um, so we have this part here, which I've already partly painted, um, just to save a little bit of time. We have that part here, which again I've painted already to save some time. Then we have the propeller, as you can see I've painted black already. And the nose cone. And we've got a bit of a, a decal to put on there. But we can basically assemble all of that. Now this little peg that goes in the back, we don't paint. And the idea is that the propeller glues to this end of it um, and that allows it to spin. Now my experience is sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So don't be too put out if it doesn't. Um, but what you do need to do is make sure you've given it a good sand all the way around so that it's not too tight in the uh, in the hole. If it's a bit too tight, it just won't spin. So just go all the way around with your little emery board and make sure that there's no lumps or bumps or seams or anything and that it, it's quite smooth and then you can put it in and test fit it and make sure that it spins and there you go mine spins make sure that's all the way down okay so we've put that in next thing we need to do is put the engine in and the engine glues onto that face there and you can see how glue might get on that part and stop, stop it spinning 
so that might happen we're not going to worry about if it does but what we do is we put the glue on the outside edge so that we try not to get it on the spinner And then our propeller, we're putting glue in that hole to mount it onto there. And we're also putting a little bit on these points here. And then finally, we glue the spinner in, and if you look on the inside of the spinner, you'll see some little grooves, and that's where we're going to put the glue. And those grooves will then sit on those lumps. There we have it. Propeller looks good. Now we take our aeroplane and there is two grooves in the side there and there which slot into don't know if you can see that the lumps there in there and it's like a little track and it'll just slide in there so to glue it in I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the inside there just to hold it in place and a little bit on the track <laughs> So what we've got to do now is just paint that bit of camouflage on the top and then we're ready for the decals. So all we need to do is carefully paint up to the line so that the camouflage carries on onto that first little bit of, <coughs> of the aeroplane fuselage there. It'll look odd if we don't paint it in. So our model is built and we now need to put the markings on um, and these are called decals or some people call them decals um, what they definitely are not are stickers because they don't stick um, they're water slide which means we've got to soak them in some water so you need some water from the tap it doesn't need to be warm cold water will do perfectly fine um, in um, as we said at the start of the video in some form of container and our painting instructions on the back of the box will tell us where to put the various decals. Now the most difficult one is going to be this one on the nose. Um, so we'll probably do that one last um, and start with some of these others first. Now decals is something that some people enjoy and other people don't. Um, I really quite enjoy putting decals on it makes the model come to life so you're going to need a pair of scissors um, the smaller the pair of scissors the better uh, just easier to navigate your way around um, the card with the decals on um, some tissue paper for blotting and um, a cocktail stick now generally how I work is I do 
one side first and start at one end and work forward. That way I know I've not missed anything. So I'll do that one, then I'll do number, which is number four, then I'll do number three, then we'll do number six. Um, we won't do that until the end. And then we'll do the other side and then we'll do the wings and we'll do underneath last before we do the spinner. So that's how we'll approach it. Um, what I like to do is cut the first decal out, which in this case is number four, which is this one that says 57. And we put that one in the water. And whilst that one's soaking, we can cut the next one out, which is number three which is this really small number and there's two number threes so it doesn't matter which one we cut and we leave that to go in the water next so you just have to soak it for a moment or two um, one of the things I should say it's really important the little numbers on here in the boxes that you don't have that on your card that goes in the bit of water because they will flow, float off and they can stick to your decal so just make sure that you've only put the decal in the water now if you've got a pair of tweezers you can lift your decal out with a pair of tweezers um, if you haven't, then you're just going to have to use your fingers, which is what I used to do when I first started modelling. You just get a bit wetter if you've not got tweezers. And I've managed to drop that one. There we go. So we know the decal is ready to come off when, if you put your thumb on top of it and move your thumb, the, the decal moves. But we don't want it to come off the paper really and... Um, unless um, unless it floats off in which case don't worry um, because what we're going to do is we're going to slide it off the paper I will show you in a minute what to do if a decal floats off okay so we know that it's going on there so if you put your finger in the water and get a drop of water and just put it where you put in the decal. It's a little difficult to show you, but I'll do my best. Then with your cocktail stick, just ever so gently slide the decal off. And you can see that's not really exactly where we want it. So if you wet your finger, you can then move the decal around to where you want it. When you're happy you've got it in the place that you want it. Right there. You can dab it with some paper and that takes the water out and helps it sit. Now if you're still not really, really happy, you can gently use a cocktail stick to move it about a little bit. There we go. And we just leave that to dry. So whilst that second one's soaking, we can cut the third one off, which is number six, this big one here. And what we'll do with that one is we'll put that one in now so I can show you what to do if a decal comes off the piece of cardboard. Just make sure we've cut that little number off because we don't want that in the water. Let's see if this one's ready. Yes, it is. I 
and then we can cut the next deckle out. So that will be that side done once that goes on. So we'll do the other side. So we'll do the next 57. Okay, so that's ready. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it about because I want it to come off the paper. There we go. So my deckle has floated off the paper. Now, if you're not careful, if you try and pick that up as it is, the deckle will all curl up and it'll turn into a little ball of deckle and you won't be able to unravel it and it'll be it'll be a bit ruined. Now, if that does happen, you can put it in the water and it might just float apart and spread open again if you're lucky. Um, that happens quite a bit of the time. But what we want to do is actually get the paper back underneath that decal. So we just gently capture the decal and get it back on the paper so that we can slide it off where we want it. So going to wet the area that it's going on like we did before I'm using my finger this time to hold it and we can move it around once we're happy that we've got it where we want it which is about there just take the water off there we go that is now looking seriously good so we can get the next one in so I'm gonna come back to you when I've done this other side because it's exactly the same as we've just done um, and then we'll do the wings together okay we're ready to put the decals on the wings So we're going to use the same process as we did before. I'm just going to wet my finger and we want it to go roughly in this area here. And you must check the instructions and get an idea of where this goes. So about there. Um, the important thing is that you get it in the same place on each wing so it doesn't look a bit silly. Now I'm going to move that forward a little bit just to make sure it's sitting flat. Make sure it's straight. There we go. I'll just block that with some tissue. Just help it dry a little bit more quickly. And we're being really gentle now with the model because it's getting quite delicate. Deckles on underneath again, checking carefully where they go, which is just around here. Being very gentle with this model now. Okay, so the last decal that we're going to put on goes on the spinner at the front there, and it's actually uh, looks like a spiral when it's spinning so uh, there is a thick end and a thin end to the decal as you can see and the thick end there the thick end needs to start against one of these holes where the propeller comes out and then the rest of it should spiral around um, 
So this could be a little bit tricky. The decal's ready. So what we're going to do is make the whole spinner wet, just dabbing it with water. That just slows down how quickly the decal um, sticks, basically. And then we're going to take that thick edge and put it where we think it should start. And wrap the decal around ever so carefully making sure it doesn't twist there we go. so this water is going to be drying out all the time but don't worry you can put more on Now the centre should, the thin part should end in the centre of the spinner there. So get that into the right position and then place your decal down, making sure it's all nice and flat. I'm just gently moving it around with this cocktail stick. Now if you think this is a bit tricky for you there's no reason why you can't leave it off. And if the decal is flat all the way around then it's lying properly. And if it's not you've not quite got it right yet. And when you think you've got it right give it a block and leave it to dry. And that is your first model done. So if you've managed to follow this video and build up this, this particular model, well done. Um, how we've built this model is how we'd go around building any model. Now don't worry if the model that you've built doesn't quite look as tidy as that. Um, if your paint job's not as tidy, if you've managed to get glue on places you shouldn't, do not worry about it. That's how we all started. It's very easy to see some of the models that get built on YouTube and think, wow, I could never do that and give up before you've started. But all of these modelers started exactly where you did, building your first model, making mistakes, struggling to get parts to fit together, getting glue on it, getting paint on things they shouldn't get paint on. We've all done it. We've all ruined decals. We've all missed things in the instructions. We've all done it. So don't worry about it. If you've managed to complete it and got to the end of the instructions and you've built your model, be very proud of yourself for getting that far. And what you need to do now is think about what model you're gonna build next. I have built my Spitfire up in the same way as we built our Fokker Wolf up earlier on. Um, so followed the same process and the same techniques that I've already shown you. Um, so the only thing left to do on this is to glue the wheels on and to put our decals on. Um, but before we do that I wanted to show you um, a little technique um, that's easy to do for painting your um, canopies. So you can see I have painted mine and what I've done is I've tried to carefully paint the lines using the same brush that came with the kit. Um, I'm painting the, the little metal areas um, that holds the um, clear um, panes of, of glass or 
perspex into place. Um, inevitably, with, certainly with that size of brush, um, I've got some paint onto the glass. And I just want to show you how you can smarten that up and make that look really, really good. It's very easy and all you need is a cocktail stick. So because these are acrylic paints that are included in your paint set, um, they don't stick particularly well to the clear parts and we can use that to help us tidy up the canopy and make your aeroplane look really realistic. So all we're going to do is, after we've let the paint dry and it's dried um, hard, is go in with our cocktail stick and just rub on the, on the glass surface up against the raised edge um, that is supposed to represent the um, frame and just rub the paint that's on the area that you don't want on the glass off. So you can see here I've got quite a quite a big dollop of paint there and all I need to do is rub up to the line with my cocktail stick and that will get any of the paint off the glass um, and as we rub up carefully to the, the metal area it will leave the paint on the raised area because the cocktail sticks um, jamming up against the, the edge so it's a really good trick for tidying up your uh, canopies if you've managed to get a bit of paint over them um, and it does make your aeroplane look that much more realistic if uh, you've not got paint on the glass So you can see I'm just following the line and the, the wood of the cocktail stick is softer than the hard clear plastic um, and so you're not going to cause any or shouldn't cause any scratches to the clear parts. It is that easy. And when you've done it, I shall show you in a sec, you just need to give the whole canopy a quick little polish up. So there we go, I've done the whole of the canopy, which has not taken any time at all. We can see we've got the metal frame and it looks um, really good and authentic and certainly improves the look of the, um, the model. Um, and then all we're going to do is just gently rub over it with a tissue and get all the little uh, broken flecks of paint off and give it a nice little rub and there you have it nice clear parts which look really cool okay so back to our Spitfire uh, and what I want to do is show you how to do um, a wash using the paints that came in the kit so what we can do is mix some paints, make them very, very thin, and use them to show all this little detail underneath and make your, your model look really, really cool. So what we've done is we've put a little dab of the brown paint that we've used on the camouflage and the black paint that we've used on the spinner and the tires. Um, and the other thing we need is some water. So what I'm going to do first is just put some water in my palette. Obviously use a bottle top or whatever it is you're using. We'll start with a little bit of water. Uh, and then we're going to start with one small amount of black paint and mix it. And you see how 
it's really really thin we can see through it that's that's sort of what we're looking for we're gonna add more water to that in a minute now black is going to look very very um, um, stark in its contrast on such a light color you might get away with black um, on the upper surfaces but um, in reality muck isn't isn't black unless it's um, exhaust or something like that so what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of brown to that mix to make a sort of grimy dark browny grey colour like that and you can mess around with this until you've got it the way you want it and we're going to add more water. We want it really, really thin, actually. So that when you pull it up on the side, it's virtually see-through. And by doing that, what we've actually done is made our very own um, wash. Now, when you get a little bit more into, into your modelling, um, you'd ideally varnish your surface and things like that. But right now, as a, as a first step away from just painting it, we can, we can do that. So what we're going to do is paint the whole area with your wash. Just go over the whole area with it and then drag it in the direction of the air flowing over the wing. So the plane moves forward, so the wind would go backwards. And that means if you get any sort of dirty streaks, they look sort of normal. Then we're going to go over some of these other details and just pick them out. I'm going to do one wing and just show you what a difference it makes leaving the other wing in place. And what happens is when this dries and the, the water um, starts to disappear, the paint will settle in the little grooves and things. And you can put more in if you want to really highlight an area to make it really stand out. So we'll leave that to dry and see what that looks like when it's done. Now on the top surfaces you can do absolutely the same but what you're going to find is it's not going to highlight any of the decals. So when you get, get into it a little bit more um, you'll want to put a, a varnish on first so that the paint and the decal behave the same. So we'll do the same and just do one and what you'll find is it's not as visible as it was underneath. So what we might do is add a little bit more black just to darken it up. I'm going to put a bit more water in it because we put a bit more paint we don't want it to get any thicker. There we go and we'll go over it again. and get all of those panel lines to stand out and do the same as we did before just drag the paint backwards so that any streaking looks natural so I will let that dry and show you what that looks like when we're done So you can see now what a difference that little wash has made to this wing when you compare it to this wing. We can see the panel lines, it's bringing out the detail, just looks a little bit more authentic. Now the, there's lots of debate about how to finish your model. At the end of the day it's your model, you finish it how you want. But that is how to do a very basic wash to get a, the next step out of your model as an absolute beginner to the hobby. If we look over on this side, again you can see it, it raises the level of the detail, it's subtle 
um, but it looks just a little bit more realistic. So that's a wash. The one last thing I want to show you is doing a fuel trail. So these exhausts, um, they weren't very um, clean, uh, and so you'd get a fuel stain along the size, uh, side of the fuselage. I'm going to show you um, how to go about that. So I have a blob of brown paint, the dark earth colour that we've used, and we're going to mix it with a little bit of black so we get this dirty colour. You'll notice there is no water this time. What we're looking for is a sort of fuel oil stain type of colour. And we're doing the best we can with the paints that we've got. Right, so I've mixed that with a cocktail stick. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab it at the back there. I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Um, three millimeters or something like that roughly and just going to put a little dab on like that okay now that in itself doesn't look great but what we're going to do then is we're going to take our brush and we're just going to drag it backwards And there we go, we have a fuel stain. And we'll do that on the other side. You just mix it till you're happy that you've got the colour that you want. And then we drag it backwards. Now as you build more models and you get more paint colours, you can mess around with that and improve that and make that look better. But right now, what you've done is you've built your model as we did before. You've now learned how to paint canopies and make them look good, how to do a wash and how to do a fuel stain, all with the stuff that came in the box. Didn't need to spend money on anything else. So there you have it. That's our Spitfire done as well and you've finished your second model maybe and you've learned some basic modelling techniques. So that is it for our Christmas build, building your first model, uh, a build aimed at absolute beginners. I hope that it was really helpful. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it and that it's helped you build these model kits. And all I would say to you is keep building, keep practicing. You'll get better and better. You'll improve your technique and build what you enjoy and build it your way. If you want to do this pink with blue spots, go for it. Build your models your way. They're your models. Just have fun with it. Just get stuck in and get building. I hope to see you on another video soon. Take care. Enjoy your modelling. And I will be back very soon.